let's say we have a positive test charge. If this is positive, does this equation say that there's a positive or a negative relationship between u and v? Um, if v gets bigger, would u get bigger or smaller based on this equation? Would that make u bigger or smaller if we hold the test charge constant? Bigger. Yeah, there's a direct relationship between mm -hmm. them. Or if this gets smaller, this gets smaller. Now remember, do charges want to move to a high energy or to a low energy? So is a positive charge going to want to move to a high potential or to a low potential? A low potential. Because that would lower its energy. Mm -hmm. So another way to interpret potential is like height. It's like height when you're working with gravity. And I think this can help to give us much more intuition for what the potential tells you. For a positive test charge, you can think of your potential as a measure of how high a point is okay. compared to the zero point. <clears throat> And we know, do things like being high? No. no. So positive charges try to move towards low potential and away from high potential, just like you would try to move from a high height to a low height. If I drop this chalk, it's going to move to a lower height. <clears throat> so it really helps to get some intuition for potential to think of it in terms of height for a positive test charge. Now, let's suppose that we have a negative test charge. If this is negative, and it's multiplying by v to get u, now does this equation say that u and v are directly related or inversely related? Um, inversely related. Yeah. When there's this negative sign here, that means there's an inverse relationship between these. For example, if we lower u, what's going to happen to v? It will increase. That's right. Uh, you could do the simplest case. Suppose that q is negative 1. Uh, well, then um, if the uh, energy is 10, then v would have to be negative 10. I see. But if the energy is 5, then v would have to be negative 5 for this equation to be correct. So you can see that the, as energy gets smaller, the potential here is getting bigger. Uh, because negative 5 is bigger than negative 10, right? It might not seem that way, but negative 5 is further to the right on the number line. So lowering u is moving v to the right on the number line. Now, do charges want high or low energy? Low. Everything wants a low energy. But how would a negative test charge lower its energy by moving to a high potential or a low potential? because these are inversely related. Mm -hmm. If you want a low energy, you need a high potential. Mm -hmm. You can see that here. 5 was have the, has the lower energy. Well, if we want the lower energy, we need the higher potential, because negative 5 is bigger than negative 10. All right, this again tends to confuse students a lot. Notice everything wants to lower its energy. But whether you want to lower your potential depends on what type of charge you are. Positive charges want to lower their potential, but negative charges want to increase their potential. It makes sense that that should be different because positive and negative charges have to have some difference between them. They can't move, both move to the same place. Mm -hmm. All right, so if a point in space has a um, high potential, well, that would be high energy for a positive charge, but low energy for a negative test charge. So remember that we said that we could interpret potential as your height for a positive charge. But that wouldn't work for a negative charge. Um, so if you wanted to, you could interpret the potential as the depth or the lowness for a negative charge, although maybe that's a little bit confusing. Maybe the best thing to do is just figure out what the potential would be for a positive charge and then reverse that for a negative charge. But if, you, uh, if we're interpreting potential as a measure of height for a positive test charge, then potential must be a measure of lowness or depth for a negative charge. All right, so everything wants to lower its energy. 
Uh, but for positive charges, that means moving to a low potential point in space. And for negative charges, that means moving to a high potential. Just as a kind of quick mnemonic, it kind of stands to reason that the simple case would be positive test charges, right? Usually life is simpler when you have positive things. Well, notice that when this is positive, U and V move together. So if you want to understand the relationship between U and V, start by thinking about a positive test charge. For a positive test charge, U and V move together. And then you, could, then you could figure out what the relationship is for a negative charge. And for a negative charge, they must move inversely to each other. Let's say I have two plates. This might be like a parallel plate capacitor, which you'll be seeing a lot. Let's say that this plate is at a positive 8 joules per coulomb potential, and this plate is at a positive 3 joules, joules per coulomb potential. Um, which direction is the proton going to move in if we let it move? Is it going to move to the top plate or the bottom plate? Bottom plate. Right. And how do we know? Well, this is a positive charge, so we can interpret these as heights. Well, what would an object want to do in, gravitation, in gravity? It would want to move to a lower height. So that would tell us the proton wants to move here to where its height would be lower. This is where it's going to have a lower energy. Now let's say I put an electron between the two plates. Which direction would it move in? Um, it would move up. Remember that for electron, the potential tells you about your depth. Well, the electron wants to get as low as possible. Now the potential indicates lowness. Well, you'd rather be at a lower point. Again, when you drop an object, it tries to get as low as possible. So this illustrates that for positive test charges, potential could be interp interpreted as height. But for negative test charges, it's interpreted as lowness. Or if that's too confusing, you can just ask, what would a proton do? And then you know the electron has to do the opposite, because they have opposite charges. So the proton has a low, so which of these two plates has the lower potential? Which of these two plates has the lower potential, the top or the bottom? Oh, the bottom. Yeah, this has the lower potential. But which of these two plates will you have the lower energy at? Well, that depends on what charge you're focusing on. The proton has the lower energy down here, but the electron has the lower energy up here. But it doesn't matter what type of charge you're focusing on, that doesn't change the potential, because the potential is a characteristic of the space, not of the charges. We need a formula that will let us figure out the potential from the source charge. Well, here's the equation that would let us figure out the potential from the source charge. So now we've seen four similar formulas, and it's easy to get confused between these formulas and pick out the wrong one when you're doing a problem. So maybe it helps to have them all in one place on your piece of paper. Here was the first formula that we learned, Coulomb's Law. Uh, then we saw that if you're focusing just on the field, well, the field just comes from the source charge. So this is the same as this formula, but we only focus on one of the charges. And then the formulas for energy and potential are pretty similar. The big difference is that these only have r on the bottom, not r squared. And notice I put dots down here to show that when we used these formulas, we didn't plug in the signs. But here I didn't put dots to show that we do put the signs in these formulas. All right, and all of these are for point charges or for, um, spherical, for uh, spherically symmetric distributions of charges. But they don't work if you're, if for other cases. So if you look at the handout, all of those formulas are in the handout. For example, here on the field and force, Here's Coulomb's law for field. Oh, this is the, uh, there's a new one. Oops. Right. 
Here's Coulomb's law for field. Here's Coulomb's law for force. And then on this side here, we have uh, this equation for point charges and potential and point charges and energy. Notice that uh, when we write these formulas, it's typical to call the charges Q1 and Q2. But when you write these formulas, it's more typical to call them the source charge and the test charge. And it's still the same formulas either way. 